our viewer question today um, is about soy products. And this viewer has asked if soy products promote the growth of breast tumors. Very interesting, very important question. I remember back in the 1990s, uh, the, in fact, uh, a very monumental book, John Robbins uh, wrote a book called Diet for New America. They had really threw into clear relief what the livestock industry uh, does to uh, animals and to the planet and the people who eat those animals. And as a result, the uh, beef sales started taking a dip. I think that book and the buzz that got started around it was instrumental in that decrease in beef sales. Well, I believe that that was the stimulus uh, for the beef industry and the meat industry because they saw the soy hot dogs and the soy burgers, etc. cetera. That, uh, that was a stimulus for them to to release this anti-soy tsunami. I saw a, just a massive number of articles come out and, and a lot of early uh, uh, adverse uh, internet buzz around it. The, ooh, soy's got phytoestrogens. Ooh, it's like taking birth control pills. Oh, it'll uh, eat tofu, it'll turn your son gay. Uh, you know, it, it gives guys man boobs and, and it gives women breast cancer. And all this, Floating, I got started getting so much mail about this, and um, the guys uh, in Denver there, the, the beef council, were uh, pretty shrewd. They, uh, they they hit an acupuncture point, and the effectiveness of that campaign is is echoing uh, in the question here you know, thirty years later uh, in, in in this lovely person's question about that. So they were very effective in, in raising all sorts of doubts. Uh, like um, so many other things, uh, there's the, the buzz and the fuzz and the beliefs, but then there's the science. What does the science really say? And when you, and because the issue is that there are some, uh, some molecules in whole soy, genistine and diazine, um, that bear a resemblance to the estrogen molecule. And they do have a weak estrogenic uh, uh, ability to them. Uh, they are very weak uh, phytoestrogens. And because of that, so, aha, see if you eat that, you're going to get breast cancer. And uh, the opposite seems to be true. When, when you look around the world uh, at the countries that consume the most soy, Japan, China, uh, Malaysia, uh, they have the lowest rate of breast cancer. So right away, uh, if, if eating soy may you have your breast lungs, you wouldn't, you'd expect to see lots of it in these countries and you don't. And now uh, that's just epidemiologic evidence, but it um, it's, uh, starts clicking things into perspective here. When they then looked at women who consumed lots of soy, do they get a higher risk of breast cancer? No, they don't. In fact, it seems that they have a lower risk of breast cancer. Why would that be? Because the phytoestrogens in the soy uh, occupy the receptor sites in the breast tissue where real estrogen, estradiol, would come in and stimulate growth. Well, that receptor site is already blocked with the phytoestrogen molecule, uh, and so estradiol can't get in there. And that's one reason why the women who consume soy have a lower incidence of breast cancer. And if they do have a, a breast cancer and they consume soy, it grows more slowly, not more quickly. These women let, live longer, it increases survival. So all the way around, the, uh, the, this whole anxiety about soy and breast cancer really uh, is undeserved. Uh, and everybody can relax about that. Now that said, uh, a couple of things. If you're a woman who has painful breast lumps, say from your previous diet, and you've just transitioned over to a plant-based diet. You don't want to be eating pounds of tofu and drinking quarts of soy milk and just, just, just flooding your system with soy. You know, enough. This is a, an ingredient, you know, the tofu, cube it up and put it in your stir fry once a week, twice a week. And you want to have the occasional soy hot dog or whatever. It's a, it's a treat. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to eat large amounts every day. Uh, but um, certainly we have uh, tempeh, which is fermented soybeans in a cake. Um, my wife uh, would make spaghetti sauce, crumble it up, and put some tempeh in the spaghetti sauce. That, that works just, just fine, and that's a, an appropriate use for it. Um, um, you can, instead of using soy milk on your cereal, you can use rice milk or, or 
and that's got arsenic in it these days. Use oat milk or hemp milk, or uh, there's there's other plant-based milks to use. Um, I did run into one uh, a, a um, <clears throat> the Nelson twins, uh, friends of mine, uh, developed really severe acne, uh, and it didn't go away until they stopped the soy. And I uh, wonder why would that be? Well, it turns out um, that in their particular bodies. Um, the um, the phytoestrogens uh, block the action of their own natural estrogens, and that created a relative excess of the testosterone that all women produce, and their ovaries produce testosterone. Well, they got a relative excess of that, and their face really broke out. Uh, when they stopped the soy, uh, it restored the balance in their body, and, uh, and their acne cleared up uh, quite nicely. That's the only adverse effect I've ever really heard of from uh, uh, from the phytoestrogens in soy uh, consumed. Oh, and they, in fact, they, they even say they were soyaholics. They were you know, drinking quarts of soy milk, using tofu and tempeh every day. Uh, they were really, really excellent. I'm glad I remembered that. They, they were really on that side. Um, I'm sure uh, now, you know, they, they still eat soy, but, you know, small, moderate amounts, as I was describing, just a little bit into a, into a stir fry or a curry. Uh, that's an appropriate use of it. So as as far as the whole breast tissue goes, relax, uh, and uh, and as far as skin health, all that, to, uh, hold it to a, a moderate amount, a couple times a week, and you should have no problems with soy. In fact, the opposite; it should be a, a, a very beneficial addition to your uh, uh, to your weekly diet. So, yay, soy! Uh, don't don't be spooked by the anti-soy propaganda there. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here, announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.